Software-defined networking and network virtualization are set to revolutionize network infrastructure, making them cheaper to deploy and operate, and letting businesses focus more on consumer needs. Virtualization is about making the existing functions which we have in the network uh, become virtual, because today most vendors sell them on specific appliance with dedicated hardware. It's about slicing, taking what was traditionally software that run on a box, putting it on a cloud center that's sliced up to perform different functions. The initial promise of virtualization, let's call that virtualization 1.0, was basically just extracting all the unused capacity I had in my servers. Most enterprises would deploy an application and they had tons of capacity left on that server. So you needed to be able to way to pack your applications together and virtualization was an easy way out of it. Network functions virtualization is the idea that we could ship one bit of hardware and then implement those bespoke network functions in software. Now that's great in terms of cost, but think what it does to the flexibility of delivery of service to a customer. Virtualization allows me to deploy an application without worrying about the servers, and without worrying about configuration. And that allows you to be more customer-centric. Instead of waiting, for something to arrive perhaps in a far-flung part of the world of a boat or a plane and then be plumbed in by an engineer in that far-flung place. It's a software download. Think App Store for delivery of really high-end network capability. It provides you more flexibility. It provides more agility in terms of turning up new services. And as a result, you actually get into an environment which is actually more tailored to the end consumer rather than offering a very broad portfolio which is suited for all different customers and different uh, needs. There is a top-line benefit, which is, I think, a key a benefit around unlocking revenue streams and new applications that can enrich consumers and even in the enterprise space. And then there is obviously the bottom line benefit around capex savings because of the open nature of the ecosystem and because of the move towards x86 non-proprietary hardware. And the opex savings are also going to be phenomenal because you're going to be able to operate this in a much leaner manner in a self-service agile manner. With virtualization you can also scale up and scale down. So you can very rapidly scale up on demand, committing more resources from the virtualization of the servers and the memory within that infrastructure. The main themes within the broadband or fixed access networks are virtualizing the CPE, so the residential gateway at the home, which you can run, let's say, from the network side rather than from in the home. And by having a cloud-based solution on the operator side outside the home, they can then have a much more intelligent system, much more cost-effective system to do that and they'll get performance and reliability at the same time. So from a business case perspective, you get customer satisfaction going up, churn goes down, cost of CPE goes down, and support cost overall goes down. The challenge is no, not so longer about virtualizing the application, but actually building the whole environment and the orchestration system, which allows to give you a full operational environment which can be deployed. There is definitely a new challenge coming on board because before what you had is the application were running on a dedicated appliance. That appliance was hardened by the vendor. What you see right now is the environment becoming more open, right? And as a result, you actually see a new era of security evolving. Like, it's not that I take application X, I run it in the cloud and it's all secure. You actually have to design the whole environment in a secure fashion, basically, to allow to give you the same experience and isolation as customers were expecting uh, today. Next, we'll be talking about quality of experience-based networks. So for that and more from the Broadband World Forum, please subscribe.